Hey guys, it's Nala Seen back again with yet another video. I would like to say thank you so much for all 115 subscribers. Um, I don't know how you got here. Thank you for dealing with my ratchetness. So I decided to do the booktube newbie tag. It was started by Brenda C. I'm looking at like the wiki for it. And she has a video unlisted, so I'm going to have to like go look for it. <laughs> and I'm and, like linking it down below for you guys. But um, the reason why I didn't do the booktube newbie tag when I first started my channel, um, two years ago actually, and I only have like three videos from two years ago, back in 2018, but whatever. Um, the reason why is because I realized that a lot of, like, people would do the booktube newbie tag, but they weren't engaging with um, the people that they would comment underneath the booktube newbie tag. So they would just come to that one video, and then they would just stop engaging with, like, the rest of the content. Like, come to me if you actually, like, like my content instead of, you know, just to say, oh, so like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Like, I don't know. I just don't like doing that to other people's channels, including, like, channels that are outside of um, booktube communities when I do see that it's like um I'd rather you know build my um you know su subscriber base you know organically instead of you know going to other people's channels and hey subscribe to my channel it's like I don't know it's like going into someone else's space <laughs> to be honest so that's why I didn't do the booktube um newbie tag a few years ago so so let's start first thing first um I see the first question is why did you start this channel this is actually my second channel <laughs> I first started my um booktube channel like back in high school and back when I didn't know that there was black um youtubers on there i mean booktubers on there and um i was going to do the same thing with um books and makeup and all that other stuff but i was like nervous and not to mention how can i say this i didn't feel like i belonged and when i first started it was like i discovered oshalay from oshi reads and i was like oh there's actually black people here <laughs> but like obviously the algorithm back then even was crap because they didn't bother to like suggest any other black booktubers and all that other stuff and um then after discovering oshalay I discovered um, Bookish Realms. Um, who else did I discover around the time that made me start my first booktube channel? I forgot, but I didn't like see that many and I just wanted to like join in and I was kind of nervous because I thought I would have to like fit some kind of, you know, bright colored YouTube mold and I didn't want to do that. So I was hella ratchet. <laughs> in fact, my um, first YouTube um, book username was like Bookish Slut. <laughs> so feel free to do with it as you please. And it was okay i only had like what 10 videos at the time i don't think i can find it because i think i deleted that channel so i don't know i don't know if i can like even find the old like videos i used to do and like post it somewhere but like um some of it was like the same old like you know calling me disrespectful for not following the youtube format because like listen back then back in like high school it was like very much cookie cutter like there was a certain format that you had to like kind of follow for like booktube and shit and not to mention um of course there was a few like actually quite a few racist um comments but like Back then, I had, like, no filter. I didn't bother to block people. I was like, go straight in, you know, being from New Yorker and Asian and all that other stuff. So after, the, like, what, the 10th video, I was like, you know what? Mm, I got too much stuff going on in high school. Let me focus on, like, book club and all that other stuff. So I deleted that channel. And now I'm starting again. And it was around the time that I started. It was like, what? What made me prompt this channel? It was around, it was around the influx of, like, new booktube, black booktubers, and not to mention when i started to feel more comfortable with my personality online when i saw other people being other black booktubers being more um you know comfortable with their personalities even though it wasn't like the cookie cutter you we know like if you've been around booktube long enough you already know what the um cookie cutter you know personality is so after i started to see that that's when i started it again two years ago so there's that <laughs> that's a lot for like one question so let's start moving on i'm gonna try to move as quickly as possible um number two what are some fun and unique um things that you could bring to booktube see Back in high school, I used to do like book covers with makeup, but now I'm glad that like other people caught on because it wasn't like it wasn't that unique. Like I think I'm um, back from my first channel. It was um, I got the idea from um, a makeup guru who um, unfortunately doesn't make YouTube videos anymore. Sadly, why is everybody leaving anyway? She used to do makeup looks based on um, certain flowers at the time, and I was like, ooh, what if I did that with book covers? And like while I talk about books and stuff, because like at the time, at least back in high school, there was at least a good five people that I could talk to about books, but they weren't as deep into it as I was. And um, I used to have like one best friend, but then we stopped being friends. So it's not like I can go and talk to her for books and everything. Cause you know, I cut people off like that as a Capricorn. So yeah, that's why I wanted to do it. And I know that now is not as new unique anymore. So whatever. So I want to continue doing that, but my God, editing makeup looks are so damn long. So I just mostly focus on like book reviews and stuff like that. <laughs> so number three, what are the most exciting? What are you most excited about this new channel? Honestly, making more booktube friends. Like I said, um, back in high school, I used to have a lot more people to talk about books from. There was that one best friend, but like now she's gone. And like, um, there's one friend that I like to talk about books with, but like she's busy with her own life right now. So I got you guys. <laughs> 
so yeah and why do you love reading well first of all it was oh uh, uh, that's the fourth question why do you love reading um it's mostly escapism and i like going into different fantasy worlds plus when i realized i wanted to like write one of my teachers back in elementary school said you know what you should read a lot more books in different genres because at least um now you it's like your personal homework to improve your writing skills because like like when i tell you like I would be like the one to write the longest when it comes for creative writing back in elementary school, middle school, and high school. I was like, yes, that's me. So there's that. Um, then there's the, um, well, not to mention, I really like, um, I don't know, relating to characters. I like seeing myself within the character. So there's that. Um, next question is question number five. What book or series got you into reading? So here's the thing. I can't exactly remember the first book that I got into reading. Like, I remember I used to read, like, a lot, but there was this one book in eighth grade um, that made me want to read a whole lot. Like, it's not that... I was a, very much an avid reader. I would always read a whole bunch. Like, you would always see me at... Like, ask my friends, you would always see me at my school library all the time, all the time. However, I would say in eighth grade, there was just one book that made me want a lot more substance from my books, and that was Flowers for Algernon. Um, by, oh my goodness, Daniel Kane? No, Daniel Keyes? No, not Daniel Keyes. Something with Daniel. Either way, we had to read this for, um, for eighth grade and have a whole bunch of essays and stuff like that. And that was the one book that I actually read ahead of everybody else because I was so interested with the story and how, um, it's written. Because, um, if in case you don't know, um, Flowers for Algernon, it's about this, um, kid, I mean, this, um, a man who is um you know, diagnosed with retardation. I forgot the exact phrase, but it was, it's an old book, okay? So, and his IQ is a lot less than um, Forrest Gump. So as you're like reading it, it's written very simply. It's written how he would write words. So it's like very easy to read, but it's like, certain, like he misspells almost everything, but he would write it how it sounds. So as he um, progresses, um, he's in this mental institution um, and they want to experiment on him to see if they can make him smarter and to make his IQ smarter. And as the book progresses, you see his writing change into more proper um everything is more spelled right but like he's going through a lot of deep stuff in his life and not to mention we looked at like um different like you know like um analogies um different you know lit terms through it and how to look for deeper meanings in it and like that was the first book that made me like wow i want to read more books like this where i can like look at the un you know the underneath the underneath you see this kakashi like okay okay like it made me want to read books where i can like look the underneath the underneath and if you you know watch naruto that's what he says okay so and to be honest with you, it wasn't until like a few years ago that I started to remember the other books I read before that book. But like that book really like blew my mind. <laughs> and I was like, I want more from my book. And I still want more from my books. It wasn't until like what? I would say literally last year that I started to like commit into reading more um, darker stories and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, that's what got me into like reading for like question number five. So number six, um, what questions would you ask your favorite book to be honest with you? I don't have any questions. I don't know. Like. I really don't have any questions for that. So moving on. Number seven, what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? Well, based on my first channel that I started, it'll be overcoming people's internal bias. And it's still a problem today. So it's not like I can like change other people's internal bias. They're gonna have to do that themselves. So that's it. Um, I don't really, I guess, obviously every once in a while people will have to start caring about subscribers because why else would you record videos? Why else would you put yourself out there on the internet for other people to watch and enjoy? So obviously I would like to grow exponentially, but not too fast because, you know, people start, you know, going in and all that other stuff. And I guess I was like, you know, I feel like every, at, at least everyone was problematic at once because I know back in middle school, mm, child, child problematic me. So you learn to grow from it. So there's that. But like, I can't really fight anyone's internal biases. They're going to have to do that then themselves if they want to, like, learn how to combat that, even me. So that's, I guess, one challenge <laughs> that would be hardest to overcome. But, like, I'm not so worried about that unless you're, like, trying to get in my, go on, like, Twitter beef and all this other stuff. Like, come on now. Come on. It's not like you can see me face to face. So if you were, you wouldn't be saying that in front of me. So next things first. I mean, um, question number eight. When did you start reading? I would say about four age four because like my mom would like have these picture books around and since she didn't buy all these picture books um like I would constantly read it over and over again and try to make up my own story which got me into like thinking about you know writing and stuff but like I would just create my own stuff through like picture books that I would create and all that other stuff and like my mom she did try to like read me you know fairy tales but then you know she's super Christian she was like you know what I'm not gonna read this to you <laughs> so yeah and of course I had to like read the bible over and over again so there's that so there is that um where do you read anywhere i can but now that i have kindle unlimited 
like I've been like reading on and off and instead of carrying this physical copy of a book and it's like yo yo I like to read almost anywhere almost I don't like to read in the kitchen for some odd reason unless it's like an audiobook then sure whatever I can go anywhere um I would like to go outside more I'm looking for like a good chair to like sit outside and like in the shade um and not worry about some goddamn ants I probably have to like get that weird thing that um there's like this weird fan thing that you can like clip to you or like some kind of weird smelling thing where you can clip to you and almost all the bugs stay away from you. I might have to get that whenever I'm going to sit outside and read a book. Um, I'm probably vlogging outside. Um, what else? But then you got all these killer... Mm -mm, mm -mm. I know they only found one killer hornet in the U.S., but I'm not taking the risk. Plus, there's bees, there's wops. Not to mention my um, my area has snakes. And um, I don't want to, you know, get... I don't know if, you know, the ones in my state are poisonous. Last time I checked, they're not poisonous. But I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> um, so there's that... So maybe after we buy that thing that keeps snakes away from the yard, I'll probably go more outside to read. But other than that, I started to go to the park, I guess, last year to go read. I would say in my car, <laughs> but like with the windows down and all that other stuff. And um, what else? Oh, not to mention, in my backyard, there's a groundhog that lives underneath the shed. So who knows? Maybe while I'm reading, I can like gain its trust <laughs> so I can like feed it <laughs> or like leave like certain like, um, like fruits and stuff by its hole. And hopefully it will take it and like need a trade towards me. Will I pet it? Probably not. Or hopefully pet a um, pet squirrel or something yeah so there's that <laughs> so last question what kind of books do you like to read man 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 it's probably a good thing that you know I started doing this now because I have expanded my stuff so before I would have to say definitely romance I like a little bit of romance in my books rather be like heavily based or just a dash of it with the action and all that stuff I don't really like to read a lot of military reads I'm trying to get into that subgenre but I do like high fantasy I love how you can create an entire religion an entire entire ecosystem an entire world um with high fantasy um i'm trying to get into more dark um grim um dark grim um books which i have a few um not to mention i do like um low fantasy um let's see what else do i like i do prefer fiction but i'm trying to get into more non-fiction reads and i realize that when it comes for non-fiction i do like one that's like a narrative narrative um non-fiction style so like if it feels like someone is telling me a story through non-fiction then I'll probably most likely read it like if it's too much like a textbook I'll probably drown out and it takes me a long ass time unless it's like an audiobook it's gonna take me a long time to like get through it and even with the audiobook it's gonna take me a long time to get through it okay next oh sorry my notification was on um what other books do I like to read so romance all that other stuff I do like I'm starting like last year I started to get into mystery so if you got a few um suggestions let me go let me know let me know I do like mythology I'm trying to okay so I'm trying to go into more to, into the subgenre of um biblical fiction so for example there's this one book called um the library of the unwritten I forgot who it's by but um Aphrodite reads she was promoting it a lot and I was like hmm I might try to get into that but I have to like read reread my bible again because I don't know I feel like the bible like now if I don't look at it from a religious standpoint because you know I have a bad re um, relationship with re religion to be honest with you in my life but um if I take it out there'll be like a lot of good inspirational stuff when it comes for like fucked up things to like write about in the bible and um lots of retellings that I could like um do based on it so I'll probably have to get into more biblical fiction so if you got that let me know I'm trying to get into classical but I have a feeling but I realized that, um, I think I already mentioned this before, I realized that I keep looking at classical books through a white person's glance. So I feel like once I start to, like, you know, build my, you know, TBR for, like, classicals from different, um, different, um, you know, cultures, then I'll probably be more of a classical type of chick. But, um, for now, <laughs> for now, I'm only sticking with, um, with, um, you know, my regular fiction. <laughs> Let's see. And I'm starting to, like, get into more subgenres. There's only one subgenre, which I will not mention, I'm scared to get into. I might have to like dedicate a whole entire video on that so for now but I feel like now with all that's going on with the protests it's probably not the time to get into that subgenre like I, I'm like side eyeing, side -eyeing it, even though most of it is written by black women but it's like I'm scared <laughs> I'm scared to go through that subgenre it's part of um the romance category it's not well it actually is part of the interracial romance but it's like a subgenre within that subgenre and it's like I don't know I'm scared I am scared <laughs> so so far I think and I'm trying to get into more stuff when it comes for other subgenres, but oh, and I really want to read more um, polyamorous um, relationships within books. And the only polyandry that I do see is um, in fan fiction, to be honest. <laughs> so that's the type of genres I like to read. So mystery, romance, um, even if it's a dash of romance, um, high and low fantasy. Then you got mystery and um, mystery novels, um, thrillers. I'm trying to get into more horror books. So there's this one um, YouTube channel called 
the orange shade tree i believe mm, i'm gonna leave her link down below but like she does mostly horror um she reads mostly horror books so i'm going to like mostly go to her channel for like horror recommendations and what else yes oh and dark room so there's that i hope that you enjoyed this video i'm gonna have to like speed this up during the editing process but like god bless stay safe out here um it's crazy out here um for all my black people stay safe um it's okay to take a break okay <laughs> we've done enough um and that's it um 